Hey everyone, welcome back to Tragic the Artery. One of the questions I get asked a lot is, how do you turn around and sell the cards that you get? Um, so today I'd like to try to show you the answer to that question. There's several methods that I use. Uh, I've got a binder of cards that has been hanging around for a while and it is now time to get these sold. So, got some pretty good stuff in here. Um, my thought is that uh, Planeswalkers are going to probably go down when War of the Spark hits, so I really need to kind of get these going. Got some foil fetch lands and um, shock lands that are probably ripe to get sold here. Um, some other good things. So, um, time to start moving some of these cards. So, let me take these out of the sleeves and I'll show you step one. Okay, scanning time. I'm going to scan these all in as non-foil first, near mint, set to market price. And we're going to deal with the pricing later. Here we go. So this RAL has a signature on it. I'm actually not even sure if that's legitimate. This is something that I'm going to have to probably deal with later. Okay, that's it for the non-foils. Now, we're gonna switch the list entry options to foil and scan those up. Okay, now I've got a very nice little stack of cards and they're all scanned in. So now I have data. What can I do with this data? Let's take a look at some of the options for selling this stack of cards here. Let's pull out some of my bigger things and some of my smaller things and let's talk about the ways that I can go about to try to sell these. First, let's talk about eBay. I've been selling on eBay for a while and I've had pretty good results. Um, you can see from my feedback here, um, people seem to like the cards that I send. Um, these, of course, were quite a while ago because I haven't really sold a lot on eBay lately. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that. Let me show you. Right now, I do have a Carnage Tyrant for sale on eBay. And <clears throat> if you go search for Carnage Tyrant, it is uh, something, it's a card that has been dropping in price. And when I posted it, I posted it as a pretty low competitive price. Here it is right here. You can see now. It is not a low competitive price because that card has come down a bit. So I've missed the boat. I'm not going to be able to sell that card for 1850 at this point. So I have to either check on it every day and fight with the other eBay sellers to try to undercut and, uh, and make a sale all the while waiting for the appropriate buyer to come along and, and want that particular one at that time and choose you to buy it from. Um, which for some people that might work and for big stores that are able to do inventory tracking on all their cards that might work, where especially where it's pricing is done automatically. Um, but for me, unfortunately it does not. I'm doing this kind of as a hobby. <laughs> And yeah, I'm acquiring a lot of cards, but I do not have nearly the amount of time it takes to be on top of an eBay store. So, um, in the case of this Liliana, it would be um, kind of the same story. Right now, the lowest buy it now for a, a non-token <laughs> real Liliana is $38.99 and $350. Now, have they been selling for that? That's another question you would have to um, take a look in the sold listings and, and find out. Looks like as of recently as a few days ago, 
one sold for 32 and 30 and 33 and 34.99 so the reality of it is you're not going to get $40 for this on eBay you're going to get what a buyer wants to pay for it depending on how desperate they are to have it at that point so uh, unfortunately for me eBay is not going to be that great of an option except for something like this this Ralz Eric since it's signed that's something that I might try to put on eBay and hope for it because some of the other selling channels that I use may not like it to be a signed card um, buy lists are gonna consider it damaged perhaps um, the other selling channel that I use is Cardsphere and they're gonna they're gonna say the same thing about it um, they can't verify authenticity very easily so it's something that you would put on eBay with the caveat that says here's a signed one honestly don't know if it really is a real signature please buyer beware buy it only if you really like it to have that scribble on it so that's just the way it is another thing about eBay is to sell singles you're selling singles people are going to buy one card and then you have to pack that and ship it and that's one at a time and when you're dealing with thousands of cards as someone who's not a, com a complete store it just it's not gonna work um, it, it's it can work for some of the really high dollar stuff and I'm I will consider selling things like dual lands and really high dollar stuff on eBay I don't have a ton of those so they, I would definitely want to try to maximize but I would still even those compare those against the other selling channels that I have so that's eBay and another word on eBay once you sell you're gonna be hit with a 10% fee for selling and then about a 3% fee for taking a payment through PayPal so it's 13% right at the top then you've got shipping on top of that and if you're shipping single cards the most economical way to do that is with a stamp and an envelope which is not very secure and you get no tracking information when you send it to the customer so it's completely on you if it gets lost or doesn't get delivered quotey marks so keep that in mind when you compare that to the other options for selling all right so let's back up again I've got all these cards on the TCG player app right now uh, what can I do with those now of course the price that I have listed there as everyone loves to point out to me which I do know I'm not going to get full price for those that's TCG market price that's what people are paying for these cards on tcgplayer.com from tcg player sellers so that's that's not me I don't have a tcg player store I really just need to move these cards turn and burn basically right so I can directly from here sell these to the tcg player store and real quick I'll show you the difference in price so we're going to switch it from TCG player market price to the TCG player trade in high price. And now we're going to see that that went all the way down. I think it was 695 before now down to 394. That's through TCG player. If I was to hit trade in right here, it's going to build a cart of cards uh, or a, a buy list so that I could send it to TCG player. Okay. That, uh, is one way I could do that let me show you what happens when you hit trade in on an Android phone to send a cart of 110 cards in a trade in to TCG player I'll wait Okay, I think you get the point. I cannot get this thing to work. It is going to sit and think like that for several days before I eventually go back into it and boom, there'll be a whole list. So currently the best way to use this app for me is to then 
go back to the scanner and hit the three dots up here <clears throat> and deal with this list as a CSV file which you do by clicking export to file you can rename it whatever you want we'll call it tcgplayer.csv and hit save I already have one it's fine we'll replace it and it's there in my downloads on my phone so now I can use that file it's just a list of comma separated value that can be opened in Excel or other programs and it's just a list of all of these cards in that condition with those with that addition and it's data that can be used. I could actually send this to the TCG player website and build a buy list on there. But lately I've been doing other things with that. So I'm going to show you that now. So that brings us to the next selling channel that I like, and that is cardsphere.com. If you're not familiar with cardsphere, go check it out, learn about it. It's a great platform for trading. You can take the cards that you don't want and turn them into cards that you do want, or you can, essentially sell them by trading them to other players so it works a little different than selling uh, in that the people that are trying to acquire cards here will set their own price and then you will then decide number one if you have that card you will decide if you want to send that card to them at that price so there's a lot of ins and outs of, on this and I'll go into that probably in another video but for now I'm going to show you how to use Cardsphere with this data that I've gathered for this stack of cards. So here's my Cardsphere.com account. Um, I currently have $71.38 in my account. This is what I can use to receive cards. If I want players to send me their cards, if I have them on my want list, which is right here. Currently all I want that is actually active is some of the uh, guild lands from the uh, the guild kits because I'm building it I'm building a cube so I've gotten quite a few I'm currently paused I don't need a demonic tutor right now um, the other aspect is what do I have that I want to send to other players currently right now I have nothing I've cleared this so that I can show you for this video normally I have quite a few on there um, so what we're gonna do is take that file that I got from the TCG player scanner app. I'm going to go to actions and I'm going to go to import here on my computer. First off, I got to go and shoot, find that CSV file. I have the TCG player.csv file chosen and I'm going to now import this into the, my halves area of the, my card sphere account let's go so you can see that it's processing it pending we're gonna see how it does on importing those cards from that list all right so there were 102 ent entries 96 unique cards were added six entries could not be matched so this happens from time to time the TCG player scanner will treat certain cards differently than the cards for wood so for some reason these cards right here which were look like they might have been foils these were foils here could not be added to the card sphere system um, probably because of the way that the set was named is what I typically find um, in fact I think these like this was a promo so card sphere handles that a little differently so I may have to, I'll have to come back and deal with those later but for now if I close back out my halves and uh, go back to what is in my halves, I guess I got to recycle. Now I have all of those other cards, 104 cards, are now I have them in my Card Sphere account. So, what do we do with all this? Card Sphere sets a price based on their own data of what a a card's value is so a Johnny mentor of heroes in fact let's go back let's find that Liliana the last hope where is she I went right by her Liliana the last hope so here on this cards page under card sphere they're giving 
this card a value of $46.37. Now, compare that to the current TCG mid pricing and it's probably pretty close. Um, they tend to be right around that. Often they're a little bit under, um, but the real story is what are people willing to offer for this card when they actually want it? So on this list here, you can see the last 10 trades for this card ended up being these prices on March 22nd. Someone offered 38.57 for it and, a, and another a seller, a trader, sent it to them for that amount. That's 83% of the, the value that it was on that day, which was 46, 47, the index price. And you see that it fluctuates just like the, the regular market does for these cards. Previous 10 trades have been as high as 42, actually 43, and as low as 36. So this card is a good card. It's, it holds its value currently until it gets reprinted and, uh, and it sees some activity. Currently, right now, the top 10 offers for this card. This person, Ponky, wants two and he is willing to give you $39.87 for that card. Now, we're going to compare that to the buy list prices later. Um, but right now, it looks pretty good. Um, I could choose I, by picking Ponky's name here to go to his um, account info and see all the cards that he wants. Looks like he wants an Ulamog. But currently, and I have an Ulamog right here, but currently he only has $59 in his balance. So I can only send him up to $59. That's the way this works with the wants on this site. If you want all of this stuff down here, and you, well, yeah, if you want four Lion's Eye Diamonds at $118 a piece, you need to have a balance of enough money for someone to send that to you. Currently, that's just wishful thinking. Looks like he's sent a few and received a few. <clears throat> and uh, he can actually add money to his account. And then if he, if he threw on 500 bucks right now, people would probably start sending him some stuff. I would probably send him to Liliana the Last Hopes right now. Um, so the other way to, and unfortunately, right now I can't send him to Liliana the Last Hopes and an Ulamog, which I have sitting right here, and I could. Um, so the other way to go about sending cards is to actually click the Send tab. And this will pull up a pretty good list of kind of the best packages and you have some controls here to where you can sort packages by total value and also by the offer percentage and the card quantity and you can tell it that I only want to see offers that are under you know un high to ones that are under 79% which is what all these are um, typically a good offer on card sphere is in the 80% range it, there are definitely a lot of um, low ballers on this site that are trying to get cards for 20 percent of the value 30 percent of the value often they're going to get ignored um, then you also have the ability this is where i think one of the ways that card sphere shines a lot is to trade with users internationally now there's of course a bit of risk to send cards all the way to belgium or france or wherever but Typically what I've found, and I've sent cards, and I'll show you in a second, to places all, all over the world, um, those international users are willing to pay a little bit more from time to time for certain, to, to get a hold of cards, because the, I don't know, the English versions are hard to get a hold of, um, or there's just not a market in their, their country for these cards, so Cardsphere is a very good option for international, and you can see I'll go to my profile and you can look at my badges. They give you little achievements right here. So I have a premium membership. I have referred a user. I have done things like sent a card and I've sent 500 cards and 100 cards. And then they have badges for international use as well. And uh, let's see, I've sent 
to five countries. I sent to Australia, I've sent to Brazil, I've sent to Canada and Portugal and the USA. So that's fun. It's kind of a little thing. Let's go back to this send page. Um, currently I could send my two Liliana, the last hopes to either Belgium or to Canada. And the total value is right here. So I could, I could get 38 bucks each for these Liliana sending them to Belgium. I could get them, you know, 3663 each to send them to Canada and so on and so forth. Now, <clears throat> where card sphere often shines for me is the more cards you have available to send the bigger these packages are going to be if we go to let's say let's look at feed the clan who's got a bunch of these cool little badge things i can only send him these two cards but he wants a lot more than that i imagine so he wants a kaya the ghost assassin and he's got plenty of money in there to receive these cards and you can see all of his info that he wants to talk about here um so I could send him some Jace the Mind Sculptors if I had those. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, Faithless Looting. So uh, these are all foils. He really wants a lot of foils. So if I had a, a bunch of these cards, they would show up on that list and I could make a package and send them to him. So what does it look like when I make a package? If, you, if I want to make this deal, I would hit review. It's going to pop up a, a confirmed trade. I got 10 minutes right now to think about do I really want to commit to sending these cards to feed the clan in Belgium so currently I'm not gonna do that so we'll just cancel it so here at the send page I let's let's drop this down a little bit um, these are good offers for some big cards but you notice there's not a whole lot of kind of my lower dollar cards that were on my list um, pretty good send rate on a Jace Friends Prodigy. Some they got the Blooming Marsh here, Gideon, Ally of Zendikar. They'll give me 82%. And if you're willing to go down a little further, say you only want, if you hide offers under 70%, this should open things up a bit. Now, uh, Peter here would take a lot of my cards at 71%, uh, making it quite a nice big package. Now, if I'm patient on these cards and I want them to go for more than 71%, then I can peruse the other packages and decide to send them that way. So that's one option that I like is Cardsphere. Make sure you check them out. Now, one of the drawbacks to Cardsphere is similar to eBay, where unless you're willing to go down a little bit on your offers, you're still going to be sending just one card or two cards to users to uh, maximize the value of each card, which is fine. That's great. And I think that's a very viable option for most users. For me, I have a lot of cards to move. I need to get them gone in bulk and cards for can help with some of that. I like to use them to maximize value on cards that are typically over 10 to 15 dollars cards that are in the five to ten dollar range and really the one to ten dollar range cards for is good for getting some of that stuff tacked onto these bigger um, packages like 71 percent on a botanical sanctum is not bad at all but in order to move cards efficiently then you're talking about a buy list so let's go take a look at the buy list to keep things simple for myself, I've chosen Card Kingdom as pretty much my exclusive buy list. You can definitely try to play the game of checking every buy list to see which ones are the, are the best for each individual card. But at the end of the day, for me, trying to move so many cards, that's, it's just not effective time-wise. Card Kingdom, on average, seems to be the one that offers kind of the most for a buy list. There's definitely times where they're not as good as the other buy lists or even card sphere for that matter for some cards. So I do try to run cards through card sphere first to get a maximization out of uh, bigger cards. But for the most part on the little stuff, Card Kingdom is the quickest, easiest way to maximize value on those cards. One thing about Card Kingdom is that you don't have to keep track of the condition of the cards. Where on Card Sphere, 
you do. A condition is very important on Card Sphere because you're sending it to a user, like a player and or a collector, and they're really going to want to see if you're saying it's a near mint card, they want to see a near mint card. It can have little nicks, little minor imperfections, but it uh, it's going to get scrutinized if it's anything more than that, and you're telling them it's near, near mint. And they have a really good Discord um, that you can have access to when you sign up, where you can run pictures of cards, buy them, and get opinions on condition. Uh, they're pretty helpful. Now, back to Card Kingdom. I'm going to use that same um, CSV file that I uploaded to Cardsphere from the TCG Player app and it's going to process it and it's going to have a little quirk as well. So the formatting from the TCG Player app is a little off. So it wants you to set the column. So this is the quantity column. You have to tell it QTY instead of quantity, right? You're going to set the column for the name as the title. This one is the simple name, you can ignore it. The set is actually called addition under Card Kingdom. They don't use card number, they don't use the set code. They are going to tell the printing version is foil, and then that's it. You're going to tell it to parse DSV with new fields. There it goes. So, Card Kingdom says that they're buying individually 90 cards. They're not buying 15 cards. We're going to look at those cards that Card Kingdom is not buying. They do not want a Blight Herder or a Dust Stalker, Stalker or a Noyan Dar, Rustic Clocken. These are essentially bulk rares, and we're going to talk about those another time. For now, uh, we are going to go back up and take a look at the cards that they are going to buy. Um, this is cards with no matches. We can tell it that uh, we can edit this. So, Island 255, let's see. It is having a hard time just figuring out that that's the Battle for Zendikar version. It, it, it's, it's not going to work. So we're going to tell it to undo that. We're going to go back to this Obnixilis Reignited, which was a pre-release card. It was the pre-release foil. We can now submit that. Okay. Suspension Field was a promo card. It's going to be the Friday Night Magic foil version, I believe. I'll have to probably double check that. And this Sandstep Mastodon, I think, was a pre-release as well. Launch Foil, I think, is what it was. So submit. We're going to do that. So now we've got all of these cards with the uh, Card Kingdom buy list price. And you can see they're going to offer me $427 total for that. So that was a lot better, well, somewhat better, than the TCG Player version of that, uh, the buy list. So this is why I kind of choose Card Kingdom over TCG Player often. Now, um, I can go through these individually and decide, say like, uh, they're only gonna give me 10 cents for Ovia, Pashiri. Um, I'm gonna take off, it's a bulk rare, but I do something different with bulk rares. I like to throw those actually on eBay and um, sell them as lots. Um, often I can get more than 10 cents um, for them, so I would probably pull that off. But for now, uh, I'm going to add all of these to their cart and then take a look at that cart. So now this is where I would go through if I wanted, and especially on the big ones, and compare back at Card Sphere. So this Avacyn Angel of Hope foil, Card Kingdom is going to give me 36 bucks. What is the best I can expect from Card Sphere? Let's go to my halves. Avacyn, Angel of Hope, as a foil, they have a, let's go to the page. Their value is 39.76. Not many trades have happened. The top 10 offers on this, the offer price there is 35.05. So right now, Card Kingdom is winning on that one. So here's the other wrinkle. Cardsphere is awesome for trading cards. For someone like me, that's essentially treating it as a better buy list, when I cash out my money, I can take this out as a payment to PayPal. They do take 10% of that. They have to pay for their servers and their time. It's really just, there's three guys that run this thing and it's an amazing organization, but they have to get paid as well. So when I use them and I cash out, it works for me. Currently, the better value though for this particular card is Card Kingdom. 
Um, a Tybalt the Fiend Blooded, a buck seventy-five on the Card Kingdom buy list. What would it be under Card Sphere? It's a card that's not going to get traded very much. They say it's, you know, value of two forty-five. Is anyone offering anything? A buck seventy-one to send it to England. It's honestly better to just do it this way. Let's go down. I was interested in the Lilianas. Let's see where they go. Oh, and then one thing about the Card Kingdom uh, buy list is that they organize everything by set. So they're not alphabetical by card. They're alphabetical by set. So you got all your 2015, 2010, your core sets are going to be up at the top. And you got Avacyn, Battle, 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 Battle. So for Liliana Last Hope, we're looking for Eldritch Moon. Let's go down. Oop, oop, Eldritch Moon, Eldritch Moon, Liliana the Last Hope. So Card Kingdom is offering 25 bucks for each of my Liliana the Last Hopes. Let's go back to my halves. This is where Card Sphere is going to shine when they are offering on a pretty hot card like this. Someone is willing to offer me more than what you can buy a list for. So for me, these Lilianas are a no-brainer. I will send these through Card Sphere. And if I have the time, I will go through and look for other opportunities to maximize my value. A Johnny Mentor of Heroes. Card Kingdom will give me 10 bucks. On Card Sphere, someone from Card Sphere will only give me $7.93. So this is where some of this stuff is going to go to the buy list. Some of it's going to go to card sphere. I would encourage anybody who wants to try either of these methods to figure out what works best for them and make your decision based on that. So I got my work cut out for me. I go through this stack and decide which one goes where in the end, sending uh, some cards to card sphere where I have to individually pack them, but to maximize the value, that's going to be worth it. And then to send the other, large stack to a buy list and make it easy on myself one package and no cash out fee that's also going to be worth it as well so in the end those are pretty much my two options don't limit yourself to those thank you for watching tragic out